Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Chris Kloris. I'm the Marketing Director here at C-Vision Technologies. Today's webinar is entitled Leveraging Intelligent Capture, Enhanced Information Governance, Best Practices with Document Process Automation. In today's webinar, we'll talk a bit about the overlap between capture, automation, as well as records management. Today's presentation will be presented by Ari Gross. He's our CTO here at C-Vision. Say hi, Ari. Hey, hi, everybody. Um, just a quick introduction about C-Vision, and I'll pass it on to Ari. Here at C-Vision, we provide server-based capture solutions for full-text OCR, which we pride ourselves on being very, very accurate, as well as file compression for improved document accessibility and reduced storage. And we also have automated data extraction solutions to automate business processes that rely on document-driven processes. Uh, today's presentation will be um, hopefully with you know 30 or 35 minutes, and we'll allow for questions at the end. Ari has a good amount of slides; he'll go through them at a good pace. Certainly, if anyone has any questions, they can they can ask, and we'll clarify whether it be after the webinar or at the very at the very end of the webinar. And if certainly if something um, requires an offline discussion, we'd be glad to do so. At this time, I'm going to pass it on to Ari. Um, hope everyone enjoys the presentation. <coughs> Hey, everybody. Um, what we're going to try to do is give you an action-packed uh, 20 or 25 minutes or so. Keep it real interesting. And if you have any questions, send them our way. We'll try to answer them, okay? So today's talk, Leveraging Intelligent Capture, is about capturing paper and making the most use out of it. We're going to focus on uh, the application of advanced capture to information governance and its relation to GARP uh, best practices. And I happen to have a GARP expert in the room, and I'll introduce you shortly. Okay, because we have some, I know a lot of you are interested in GARP and, and, and best practices for GARP. So what we're going to cover today, benefits of smarter document capture and the expanding role of records management and information governance. And then we'll give you some examples of how advanced capture and automation can give you increased efficiency, there's better efficiency, and of course ROI, while complying with records management and information governance best practices. Uh, things like digital mailroom, which we'll get into in a few minutes. And then we'll talk about an analysis of automated business solutions that can be leveraged to advance an organization's position in the GARP maturity model. <clears throat> and last but not least, conclusions and questions from you guys. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, scan is one step. How many of you, just to show of hands back there, uh, how many of you are in the practice of capturing all incoming paper? So there's very little paper in your organization. I see there's a show of hands, but a lot of you not really raising your hand. Okay, so probably a lot of you still have paper. Maybe you're scanning. Maybe you're scanning. But even if you're scanning, maybe you're not scanning all your paper. And even if you are, there's still many, many issues until we consider that you've satisfied best practices. So if you're scanning paper, is everything searchable? So you automatically file all incoming mail? Um, are things efficient? Do you compress them so a digital document can actually be sent to somebody by email in your organization. So even if you are capturing, and a lot of you are not even capturing all your paper, there's still a lot of things you need to do so you have best practices, right? Is everything searchable? Is it compressed? Is it PDFA? So that retention policies can be applied and relied on. Uh, so we're going to talk about best practices for uh, capturing uh, your, your paper, document capture. Uh, some of the benefits of advanced recognition and compression within your company one is uh, leveraging scanning and advanced recognition. You can allow yourself instant access to paper-based information. So instead of going to the manual file room to pull out a record or mortgage application, a refi, insurance policy, everything is available digitally. That's one nice advantage. Uh, with compression technology, uh, we're talking about real service compression where you get a 100-page file to maybe be a megabyte, two megabytes. Uh, with advanced compression, you can email, transmit, and da download and upload documents very, very efficiently. A lot of people don't have the same efficiency sometimes with captured paper because the file sizes are bloated. But that means they're not using the latest compression technology. And we'll get to that. Uh, you can reduce storage and transmission requirements tenfold to a hundredfold. I think tenfold is more black and white. A hundredfold, you'll probably see that more in the color space, Chris. What, right? Is that our experience? Yeah, we can, we can compress color documents far more dramatically than the black and white. Right. And a lot of the companies we deal with, we've got about 5,000 corporate clients, do capture the color because it looks exactly like the original. 
Yeah, and, and with compression technology, you can overcome some of the, the burdens associated with color capture. Right, so we, we definitely recommend it. We've got some very large Fortune 500s that are doing color capture, so we're always happy to talk about that. You can utilize more accurate OCR for more reliable text search. So part of what you want to do in discovery and, and, and anything like that is be able to find what you have or for a company to be aware of what its informational data assets are. And with full OCR, you can do that. Also, we let you archive documents. If you use best practices, you should map all your files to PDFA. I don't know if you are. But the nice thing about PDFA, it's guaranteed to open 10, 20, 30 years from now. So that's very, very beneficial. If, you're, if you have a PDF file or you're mapping capture paper to PDF, be sure it's PDFA. Let's talk a little bit about compression. If you capture stuff and it's too bloated, it's not that useful within your organization. So number one, significant progress has been made in compression technology. Number two, scan files can be made as small as digital files. We're going to prove that point in a minute. And once they're that small, they're very efficient to store access and transmit. Just for example, we took a file here. This is the Monica Lewinsky report for those of you who might be remember way back in the day. Now, it was 921K bytes when released by Congress. And about half the size was just the name Monica, which appeared a lot. Just kidding. So that was a Word document. Now, when we scan it, all of a sudden it becomes this bloated tip. Not only is it 13 megabytes, but you can't find anything. So, you, so just scanning is not the whole answer. We use standard PDF, and that would be just putting it into Adobe Acrobat, for example. It doesn't mean it's searchable. Standard Acrobat PDF is not searchable, and you still have TIFF file sizes. You know what? When you look under the hood, it's still TIFF. So it's there's still 13 meg. When you put it through Vision PDF compressor, for example, now you're using the latest compression plus OCR. You have a fully searchable web-optimized PDF, 870K bytes. That's less than a megabyte, smaller than the original Word file. That is efficient advanced document capture. But a captured document is no larger than the original electronic file. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about PDFA. Some of you are worried about retention compliance issues. The reason PDFA was uh, invented is really just a flavor of PDF. And any um, reader, any reader after Adobe uh, 7 uh, will open them. But the thing about the slash A, it means it's archivable. And that means you're guaranteed in 5, 10, 20, 30 years, you can always reproduce this document for discovery, retention, compliance, whatever the reasons might be, guaranteed to be reproducible. The features it has that make that, with the reason Adobe is able to make that guarantee, and it was an ISO committee, and I uh, had some involvement on that, on that committee, was device independent. It doesn't matter what device you're on. Everything you need is in there, self-contained. You're not going to rely on some font that's outside. Self-documenting, transparency, lack of tech, technical protection, disclosure means the specs are widely available, like the Adobe specs are, are published. And adoption, it's a, it's a format that everybody's using. So these are all features of PDFA, which guarantee that it's the new electronic microfish um, that you can gar guarantee to open now and even 100 years from now. I, I think what we're seeing, by the way, is wide adoption at certain government levels, but corporations are still a little bit slow to adopt the PDFA technology. Let's talk about <clears throat> the relationship between advanced capture and GARP. Um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the relationship here. So if you capture paper, talking about document capture, and then apply the latest compression techniques, so everything is available, accessible, emailable, and recognition, so it's fully searchable, that helps you with respect to GARP in the following way. You maintain the document and, met and metadata integrity. You improve the availability of the document. You can get it from anywhere. As long as you have that access and the document, let's say, is on a secure uh, web install, um, you can find this file. No need to go down to the file, the file list. It enhances compliance. Because you can always find, you can always produce the document in a very timely manner. You do a full text search, all such documents satisfying a certain regular expression or, or satisfying a certain query in an SQL sense will appear. You can download or print all of them, so you have access to all the documents within your organization in a timely manner. You can secure it again. You can say, well, these files are only for people in the mortgage group to look at. Uh, it increases protection again. Once it's an electronic file, you can put it in a secure ARM repository. That reduces the need for multiple copies. And you enable PDFA for preserving record retention because, again, PDFA is guaranteed to view, display, print now and, and, and forever. Um, I think we've, we've covered this. Uh, Tony, any comments about when you talk about protection by secure ARM repositories, right? Would that only be pos possible <clears throat> once you digitize the paper? You have to make it electronic for that to apply? Well, I think that it enhances the security. 
So you have the ability to provide um, what a lot of folks refer to as equitable access um, to, uh, to always see the documents that are applicable based upon their role or group within the organization. And then when we talk about reducing the need for multiple copies, what a lot of organizations will do is once that document, once that electronic rendition is stored within the records management or document management solution, rather than emailing copies of the document, they might just email a, co a link to the document itself, which of course validates the user's security when they click on it and um, ensures, again, the security and the protection of the document. Okay, excellent. So, so what we're really advocating here is not only just more efficient use of your paper, um, but really best practices in a GARP sense, in a GARP, uh, with respect to GARP best practices. Um, let's talk about some of the benefits of uh, classification and machine learning, uh, because part of advanced uh, document capture is you can all of a sudden take your mail as it comes in, for example, classify it based on, oh, this is a mortgage, this is a mortgage refi, this is uh, an insurance application, this is a credit card application. Once you classify it and you digitize it, you can automatically do things with it, like put it to SharePoint. Um, routed to the right people that have to be routed to. So some of the benefits of classification machine learning, it facilitates automation of manual business process, routing, redaction, data extraction, etc. You can learn classification rules automatically because if you put a digital mailroom um, system, you, 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 you uh, focus it on your existing document taxonomy, let's say it being SharePoint documented wherever you have it, it can learn the taxonomy classification rules automatically. Those don't need to be programmed in. System gets smarter over time because you train on validated files. So if you, let's say it's an automated AP environment. You're trying to automate uh, in the mailroom the AP part, right? As you validate the incoming invoices, the system gets smarter and smarter. Now it knows this vendor. Now it knows this vendor. The results get better and better over time, meaning there's less and less manual input required as the system is run over time. Reduce document processing time and increase accuracy. I mean, that flows naturally, right? Management document process automation output as business records, because all of a sudden, if you get, let's say, a credit card app, you know it's attached to the SharePoint and you fill out that, that record structure. So all of a sudden it's a business record that says, uh, you know, mortgage app received on this and this date. Uh, it's about mortgage refi. So you're filling in a business record and then you normally within your organization you're going to have business rules associated with that, with that business record. So it really facilitates document process automation. Talk a little bit about how the evolving technology uh, supports advancements in the mailroom. So classification machine learning are becoming better and better. These days, classification is almost 100% if the training set and tests are the same. So very, very reliable. It used to be research about 20 years ago. It's now a very, very evolved technology that can be put to use for your company. One thing the system can do, learns by example. So you can learn to classify a form type by just looking at different form types. You don't give it any rules. It learns the rules. These are automatic. You learn to classify a page in a form. So you might have a form that has pages in it. Let's say it's a tax return. You've got to separate out dividends from the W-2, from the 1098-B. You can automatically splice that pages in a complex form by form type. You can learn to look at metadata in a form. So you'll know where the data is that needs to be extracted. And you can learn about data types. This is a name field in this position, Social Security over here. So there's <clears throat> one of the things the system can do, learn by example. And whenever you correct something, which is called validation, it learns from that too. Another thing that can be done in terms of learning is database lookup, where you will take a system and look up the information you have, and then do a fuzzy mask on the information that maybe you don't have. So just for example, if it's a tax return, you think you got the Social Security number, you do a lookup, you pull out the person's record. Now you match that record against the address, the phone number, everything else. So database lookup is part of machine learning because the machine wants to take advantage of everything that's known uh, to the database. Rules Engine is also something you can put in ahead of time. Typically, these are business rules, business logic rules, which may include action items on a received piece of mail, things that say if the invoice is greater than 60 days, I definitely want it reviewed by a human. So you can have a rules engine that defines what's done automatically and what has to be passed manually to a human for inspection. Uh, here's sort of the workflow if you want to get a feeling of how um, classification machine learning can automate a business process within your company. You would have incoming paper, maybe it's your mailroom, maybe it's your AP department, whatever. And then you have a recognition server whose job it is to recognize each document type and pull out the related fields and put them into a business record, a database record, a SharePoint record. 
Then we have human validation where any file we're not sure if we classified or extracted it correctly is shown to a human. The data, once it's extracted and validated, is exported into some system, like say SharePoint, where the next action items are now applied. But at the same time, you see that this goes in two directions. It's like a fork in the road. Machine learning is applied so that the system can learn from all the corrections that were done at the validation stage. So the next time around, better classification, better recognition. And all this information that's, that's pulled off is stuck into your knowledge base, which becomes smarter and smarter. So basically, you have this little robot running around your company that's getting smarter and smarter every day by just watching all the validation. Any correction that, makes, that takes place, it learns from it. And the system gets better, more reliable, smarter, more automated. Now, how does this relate to GARP? <clears throat> um, so, so the big picture, machine learning can efficiently and accurately classify information the content records management system. And how does that help you? Well, you achieve greater availability of vital business records right away, by the way, because you know, same day they come in, they get scanned, they're classified, put into SharePoint, routed to whoever they need to be routed to. So greater availability of vital business records in a shorter time period by automated document file and declaration. Increased compliance because they're defined policies. So you've got a complete taxonomy. You know this is a, a mortgage refi in the continental US. You write it to the right away, same day it can be routed to the uh, correct underwriter. I mean, so all the rules, whatever rules you have, action items on a document can be applied uh, automatically. There's reliable protection by ethical wall security. And we have Tony here who's an expert on ethical wall security. So we'll be taking your questions on that. Only the appropriate individuals groups have access. Right? And Tony, that's really, when people talk about ethical wall security, they really mean limiting access to the right groups, the right people. That's correct. Right. So based upon their role, the groups in the walls of the organization, obviously that will define within, typically within the records management or document management system, what information they have access to. And also, just to kind of piggyback off of something that you said earlier, Ari, is that uh, what we're really talking about here is building off of and leveraging the classification that's occurring um, as part of the, the document process that we're automating. And then obviously leveraging that to ensure that the output from that uh, document process is being accurately filed into your, your document management or records management system so that the appropriate policies can be applied. Okay, Tony, thank you. So I think you all get the picture that obviously if you're interested in the security of your document, it's very helpful when you digitize everything and automatically put in the right taxonomy where all the security that you have around a certain document class is going to be applied. Instead of having paper in a folder lying somewhere on someone's desk that says, for your eyes only, or something like that. Um, confident retention management disposition processing, again, we say confident because the rules you put in on, at the IT department level or at the business administration level that are automatically followed at this point. A certain document has a certain set of actions and a certain security that's automatically, automatically coupled with that document when it's receive. Um, we're going to go through some business cases at this point. And our, our goal, of course, is to pack this. We're, we're hoping about, about another 10 minutes we're going to be finished, and then we hope to take some of your questions. I'm going to give you a few business cases to make it um, concrete, not so abstract. So one would be forms processing. A lot of companies have an interest in forms processing. Why? Well, benefits, if, you're going to, if you can automatically process your incoming credit card forms, your, your incoming tax applications, whatever they may be, Reduce manual labor 50 to 80 percent. Sometimes we see more than 80 percent labor reduction. To increase data accuracy, data extraction accuracy, because basically the machine does it, and if there's any issues about the values recovered, we can always forward it to a human. So you really have two, almost two pairs of eyes looking at it. You speed up processing through automatic classification and indexing. Since it's fully automated, you reduce the prep time. You index the machine speeds, etc. And it supports a single pipeline solution where all documents, be they paper or electronic, can be processed through one funnel. Let's just show you a little bit about what the workflow looks like. So if you have incoming paper, first thing you want to do is capture it. Image capture can be done through Watch Folder, integration with some of the standard capture products out there like Opex, Captiva, <clears throat> and talk to a standard document management system like SharePoint. You can improve image quality, and this is normally what we do up front before recognition. We apply recognition. Recognition has different flavors, including OCR which is machine print, OMR, check, check, check boxes, ICR, handwriting, barcodes, et cetera. So you apply recognition to the recognition stage. You extract information because, for example, let's say you're putting it to SharePoint 
or document them, well, it needs to know the text to give you full text indexing. So extract information for the purpose of classification, document separation, indexing, etc. Compressions apply. That makes it efficient to email, upload, download, etc. Then PDFA for PDFA compliancy, which supports long-time archiving and retention of these uh, documents. Map it into a finished PDF, and you're good to go. So that's the basic document workflow that uh, we associate with automated business processing. Now, what's the relationship between automated forms processing and CART? So again, automated forms processing enables efficient, accurate data extraction for populating databases, which is typically you get this form, you want to populate a database record, normally what happens in your organization. If you think about it, any form you're getting from your client typically ends up populating some database record, okay? And then you can use it, once it's a database record, you can use it very efficiently in a business app. So all that happens by, um, in doing this, we ensure the protection of sensitive data because we only preserve information required for user validation to appropriate individuals. So meaning the people who are shown this have a right to see this document. When it hits the mail and it's scanned, routed to underwriting if it's related to underwriting, routed to VP of finance if it's related to VP of finance. So the so documents are secure. They're, wrote, they're routed to the right people and seen only on a needs basis. Document integrity and compliance are also assured by maintaining a complete audit trail. You always know where this document has been and is going. Availability by propagating essential data to applicable business applications and retention and disposition because the front end classification declares what kind of document it is. And then so right, well, right away when you see this document, it's declared as uh, it's the mortgage refi, it's the home, app, home application, it's the credit card app. Whatever document it is, it's inserted, let's say, into SharePoint and automatically whatever rules you have for retention and disposition will be automatically applied to this document. Another case, business process automation redactions. We have clients automatically redacting sensitive information across millions or even hundreds of millions of files. And the way we do redaction comes in three flavors. Pattern matching, where you specify a certain pattern that needs to be mapped, like a social security number. For example, right, so it satisfies a pattern. Let's do this again, right? See, somebody likes that, okay? And then we've got phrase recognition where you might say, look, when you see this keyword, and the data you want is right next to it, adjacent to it, to the right of it, below it. So there's pattern matching where you specify a pattern you're interested in, phrase recognition where you give us the keyword, and we find the associated data, general redaction where you know positionally, geometrically, where the data field is going to be. So we support all those three types of redaction within our trapeze redaction system. Now, how does that relate to supporting GARP? Well, um, automated, uh, automated and semi-automated redaction is relevant to GARP in the following ways. Number one, we safeguard the protection of private, confidential, or secret information because, again, and you might have FOIA requirements, which means you've got to release this information, but you have to redact certain terms. This is a way of guaranteeing that redaction takes place. Demonstrates compliance with organizational regulatory privacy requirements and provides availability. Now these records are available typically both in the original version and maybe the redacted version, which might be released to the public uh, based on some, let's say, FOIA requirements. Uh, let's get through another business case for um, business process automation. This is routing additional minimum. So we have some clients, some publicly traded New York Stock Exchange clients that rely on Seagate Solution to fully digitize the mailroom. There's no more paper. Paper comes in, digitized, now you're routing electronic documents through the office. There's no more paper trail. Um, let's talk about some of the benefits of that. So benefits of automated routing and digital mailroom within a company. Number one, digital mailroom solutions reduce internal costs associated with mail handling. Why? Well, you're automating expediting captured mail. It's all being done electronically at that point. You facilitate further automation because now, let's say the document comes in, you know it's an invoice, you can now send it to a software system made to understand and automate the AP process. Right? So you can, once you know it's a digital mail of a certain type, you can now send it to a vertical automated solution that maybe is focused on, we have solutions in these areas, automated AP, automated AR, automated forms processing, etc. Uh, you reduce the lost mail typically because once it's in the system and it's electronic, you put it into a managed uh, uh, database repository, uh, again, like SharePoint, like Documentum, and therefore you're not going to lose the mail anymore. It's not, like this, this, it's not like the janitor threw the mail away. 
and the potential for unauthorized access also is is is, is minimized because essentially you've got complete control from when you capture this document. The company takes complete control over who has the right to access it and who does not. And by providing a funded capture component, you're now managing or can carefully manage the electronic rendition of this document. You don't have to manage the paper anymore. The paper can be shredded if you like. And you're managing the electronic rendition of the document. So just to give you a pictorial of what the workflow might look like if you decide tomorrow that you're going to call Tony and say, hey, I want to automate my mailroom here. Uh, of course, we have 250,000 employees, a lot of mail. We're okay. We're up to that challenge. Try it. So what would the workflow look like? Technology currently exists to do the following. Automatically route documents to folders, users, and repositories, which is one of the first things you want to do. You get the document in, just figure out who to route it to, right? Produce an automated digital mailroom where essentially you don't need the paper anymore. Archive the documents into SharePoint or whatever RM system your company might be using. Leverage machine learning and validation for improved results. So one of the key components here uh, in this system and in our system in general is we learn every time you make a change, you say, oh, that's not a mortgage refi, that's, that's a car loan, that's an insurance act. It will learn from all those changes, all those edits, the system learns and continues to improve. Uh, how does that relate, by the way, to, to best practices as far as GARP is concerned? So document routing and digital mail will enable organizations to digitize and automate say, paper based portals like the mailroom. Um, of course, it could be other areas too, right? Like get, maybe you're getting a lot of documents via fax. Well, you still want to insert them. A lot of the rules still apply for electronic filing, just like digital mailroom. Uh, number one, uh, it ensures protection of potentially sensitive data because routing information, information is always routed, becoming mail, becoming faxes, directly to appropriate individuals. Only people who need to see this see this. And you leverage your existing security protocols within the company. Number two, compliance. Um, because essentially what you what you lot what you see a lot of times if you have to produce a document um, at trial or whatever, if they want to see a complete audit trail of where this document's been to be sure that it hasn't been modified, well, you'll know as soon as it gets into your organization. It's captured, and from that point on, it's tracked. There's a complete audit trail regarding every document in your organization. Time avail timely availability, because everything's electronic. You want to find a file, do an SQL query, you'll find the file. So ongoing ease of access, you don't have to go to the file room to find this piece of paper, or it's an audit, or it's an invoice that needs to be approved, and you're wondering whose desk it's on. The documents are available to everybody within the group that needs access. Retention management and disposition also an important part of GARP, are leveraged by a front-end classification because you're auto-declaring the document type. And once you have the document type, the retention and disposition are put in as a rule also associated with, with that system. So Tony, I mean, in your experience, do companies try to switch to electronic documents so that they satisfy, better satisfy retention and disposition rule on GARP? Well, I think you know, most organizations uh, realize, of course, that um, uh, Retention and disposition apply regardless of the format of the record, but um, uh, obviously having an electronic copy definitely enhances the availability of the information. And then, um, if that information uh, exists electronically at that point and is being filed into a, um, a managed repository, the appropriate policies can be applied, and that ensures obviously that they're um, enforcing those policies consistently regardless of the format of the record, whether that be physical or electronic or Excellent. And Tony, thank you very much. So we hope to wrap up the next five minutes. We're almost uh, concluding here. We'd love to hear from you guys. I'm sure everybody's got a question or two. So um, on we go. We're now just going to focus on what the action, what are the takeaway items uh, from uh, today's discussion of advanced capture and automating your business processes with respect to CARP. Uh, number one, Hopefully, we come up with an understanding, leave this webinar with some understanding, that advances to document process automation can enable a company like yours to optimize and lower your operational costs. All of a sudden, out with the paper, in with the electronic paper, the PDF, and you automate processes that have always been manual within your organization. Right away, you see a rapid ROI. Identify business process automation opportunities. For example, digital mailroom, automated AP, automated force processing, automated EOB processing. Etc. Etc. Automated redaction. Etc. Number three: Develop strategies for more efficiently utilizing and managing downstream digitized content. So, of course, once everything's digital, you can really think about ways to optimize. You've got everything in digital paper. 
how do I optimize certain processes that you never even thought about optimizing when they were in paper form. Um, in addition, we talked about machine learning and classification. They've come out of the research labs now. We've dusted them off. and They're really ready and they're product ready and they can work for your company where they can really sit and learn and learn from all the, all the corrections you make, get smarter and smarter, more automated, understand a better, better understanding of your documents and, and what the data types are in your documents. So we leverage the advance of machine learning and classification, let's say in a digital mailroom solution, to implement a solution that supports record management best practices. And I think the last takeaway, examine your GARP compliance plan and determine which document process automation technologies of the ones we covered today are optimal for your company, for your organization. So thank you for listening in today. We like to call ourselves WCVN, the C Vision Radio Network, Webinar Network. And we, we like to keep you guys informed of the latest technology that's out there. So we also love to hear from you if you have any questions. Again, thank you. Thanks, Ari. Um, if anyone wants inf more information, they can email info at cvisiontech.com. That's our general email. If any specific comments to Ari, we can certainly make sure that the, those questions are routed directly to Ari. Otherwise, thanks again for everyone for attending. Certainly thanks to Tony for helping out with today's webinar and, and Ari mm -hmm. for presenting today's webinar. Thanks again and have a good day, everyone.